One might go as far as to call this case peculiar. It is indeed unusual and rather chilling to even remember those events as they have been recounted to me. When I was called to duty that accursed night, the keeper handed me the keys to the gate of the cemetery. He gave me a look of pity and whispered these words as he patted my shoulder. Son, if you decide to hand me back those keys, you shall be forgiven and I will personally see that you're given work to do in the factory. You must not enter past these gates, not tonight nor ever, for I fear you might befriend the dead and walk with the Lord. Now it would taste a lie to say I knew what the old administrator meant by his words. Was I being fired? Had I upset anyone in my nightly watch over the gardens of those past? Undeniably, if so, it was an absolutely innocent mistake. The keeper, though, seeing my perplexed expression, no doubt, went on to elaborate on the events which had transpired there the night prior. The story which follows is exactly the way he recounted the facts to me. Young Master Terence, I shall let nobody from my close family or friends pass this way again. A priest is to come bless this place tomorrow, but even so, I do not have my hopes up. I believe now more than ever that this is where the devil dwells at all unholy hours of the night. I've heard stories before of demons dancing on the graves, giggling fiendishly as they smacked the tombstones with whips and burned the flowers with their fiery spit. As you might expect, I believe none of this nonsense until last night, Master Terence. Last night, as you were off to your folks sleeping soundly, I took watch of the cemetery. I doused my lamp at some point, you see, when I heard a man. There was a noise like a man was humming to himself in the dead of night. Now, it is certainly not unheard of to find a drunk looking to make the gravestones his bed for the night. You might have had your fair share of such fellows. Though, as you might guess, I take no pleasure in sending them away. It is what must be done, and so what I said to do given the circumstances. I listened to the low hum, trying to distinguish where it seemed to come from. The bloke muttered words of a rather jolly melody. As I made my way through the dark night and the narrow alleys, the sound grew louder and eventually filled my ears completely. I spotted a grey silhouette sitting next to the Morgan's family mausoleum. They were rocking their head from side to side lazily and I was mostly convinced at that point that indeed it was nothing but a harmless drunk. However, Master Terence, tell me why I could not shake off this sense of terror that was gripping my very soul. The figure had not spotted me at that point and I was sure it had not heard me either. I peeked at it from behind the statue of the angel and I waited, I'm not sure what for though. All I know is that I could finally make out the words of the drunken's melody. It sounded absolutely macabre. May God forgive you wicked folk and let thee rest tonight. Ye mind the words have spoken, so go forth and run in the night. No angel's gonna save you, and no safe it off your fright. Go forth and dig your grave up deeper, don't put up a fight. You see, this is my graveyard now, and here I shall resign. The gates are closed, you will find you are on the wrong side. My blood, Master Terence, it had already run cold listening to the words the creature sung. For I was, and I am still, certain that creature is the name to call it. It knew of my presence, and it pushed itself up from the ground as it kept humming. I could see the shadow of its profile perfectly in the light of the mausoleum. And when I tell you... When I tell you it gaped its mouth open for... For that is not what a man can do. 
It opened its mouth slowly, but past the point any jaw can drop. God is my witness, I do swear so that you could fit a small child into that abomination's mouth. It would have easily swallowed the hound. And I remember thinking, without much trouble, I thought to myself, it could have fit me too had I stayed. But that I did not do. I jolted from my hiding place and raised the devil to the gates. All the while, that damn humming followed me. The sound of its steps on the gravel deafening. I pray to God that this graveyard may not be my final resting place. I know that had that apparition truly wanted me, it would have had me. In a moment or less. I'm afraid it was by its mercy I escaped. It is not without difficulty that I have to admit this, Master Terence. I'm afraid I only own this spit of land on paper now. It truly has been claimed by the devil. And if you wish to call me a madman and dare enter tonight, I do not know if the devil will grant you the same courtesy it did me.